So after the development of Sanger method, it was used to sequence a virus that has a size of 5,386 nucleotides. So after the sequencing of that virus, Sanger was awarded a Nobel Prize. So by using this method, there was an increase in the sequencing data and there was increase in the exponential rate. And that rate was even increased when the Human Genome Project was started in 1988. So after the completion of the Human Genome Project, approximately 3 billion nucleotides were sequenced. And in the initial stage, the sequencing method was using only we can read the 500 to 700 nucleotides because the initial sequencing methods were have some limitations. So we cannot go beyond the 500 to 700 nucleotides. So the sequencing data that was obtained, they were automated and the automated machines, they read the data by using the microscope-like instrument and that is used to read the data. But again, the data that was used to, the sequencing data that was generated can be used only for 500 to 700 nucleotides. Then after 20 years, after the Human Genome Project was completed, new techniques were developed and one of those were the shotgun sequencing. And that se process was used when there was a huge amount of uh, DNA sequences to be performed. And in this technique, the DNA of, from the genome is broken down into the small pieces by using the technique of sonication. And after the breakdown into the small pieces, the sizes that are corresponding to 500 and 700 nucleotides, they are separated and they were then amplified through a process of PCR. And then after amplification, they were ligated with the sum of the vectors. And these vectors were then lastly transformed into a suitable bacterial host and when they were bacterial hosts were grown having these transformed plasmid and in the plasmid there is a small fragment of DNA that is to be sequenced and then these bacterial hosts they grow and in every single bacterial host the plasmid will also replicate and in this way the Plasmid is replicated and we will we can get the billions of copies of the plasmid that can be extracted from the bacteria. So this whole cloning process is a lengthy process and after this cloning process we can sequence the unknown fragment of the genome and after sequencing then we can compute it and join them in, in, a, in a manner that we can get the whole sequence. So for sequencing of the unknown genome, we have to perform first the experiments. And in this experiment, we have to use this uh, protocol starting from the sonication to the transformation and then the sequencing. And in the second step, we have to do the computational studies we have to use the computers and some other softwares and algorithms to join the sequenced fragments in such a manner that we can get the whole sequence of the organism's genome.